Welcome to another edition of Bet on a Vet. Uh, this is where we feature veteran-owned businesses in the Sacramento region. And this month, it's Krista Kirk. Hi, Krista. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. And, and you are a tattoo artist. You own the clubhouse. It's Kirk's Clubhouse, right? Yes, that is correct. And you do a lot more than just tattoos. What, what, what other services does the clubhouse offer? Well, we have your standard studio, so all tattoos of all sorts. Then we do piercing, body sculpting, modifications, um, the teeth whitening, teeth gems. We do murals, and we promote all local businesses and sell their merchandise as well. How long have you owned this business? How long have you operated it? Um, well, I just opened this one at this new location, but I've been in the industry since 2016, and I've owned the clubhouse since 2018. Oh, that's great. So you're doing really well opening a second location. Well, we moved the location. Um, oh. I was in North Highlands and it was it was getting bad. So I moved up to a very nice area. OK, where are you located now? Um, I'm in Alta Sierra, so I'm a little past Auburn. OK. Oh, nice. All right. Yeah. And your story is really compelling. Um, life for you wasn't real easy early on. No, not at all. Um, I was on my own at a very, very young age. Um, my parents had me young and then decided not to be. Uh, so I got married off and at 16. To escape that abusive marriage, I decided to join the military. And since I was an emancipated minor, I got to join earlier than most. Um, wanted to be a sniper. Wasn't allowed to do that at that time. So wait, I chose... Be, wait, 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 wait. You wanted to be a sniper? I wanted to be a sniper, but females couldn't be snipers then. Okay. And I would be politically incorrect for me to say what I was told then, but I found it very funny. So um, I, they basically asked, hey, do you like explosives? And I was like, yeah. Um, so I tested <laughs> in for that. And uh, I was one of the only females in, in my brigade other than a captain and uh, got my orders. I was scheduled to go to Afghanistan. And then we had a training drill accident where I almost lost my leg. So my career in explosives ended because you can't have metal in your leg and uh, do what I did. So I got an honorable medical discharge and uh, my life changed after that a lot. So um, I decided that I, there's a big gap in between leaving the military and becoming a tattoo artist. But um, I wanted to be able, I had children, so I wanted to be able to be home with my kids. And um, I'd gotten a really bad health diagnosis. So a bucket list was to tattoo myself and it turned out I was really good at it and the time frame that they had given me I have superseded and I wound up uh, starting a business and thoroughly enjoying it. Uh, did you always have a, a, a talent for, for drawing for, for art? Oh, since I was a little girl, I would draw on my legs or draw something, always try and create something, painting, just anything and everything, because um, they were gifts of love. So like when you made something, you know, I used the talent that I had to give to friends and family and things like that. Starting a business can be really, you know, it, it, it can be terrifying. Um, how did you make that transition, especially coming from you know, your background and your experiences and, you know, starting this thing up from scratch, what was that transitionary period like for you? Um, it was terrifying because the unknown is what's scary. Um, but I didn't really have another option. So I worked in the industry and I worked from some unsavory individuals and I decided that I wanted to be different. Um, so since I helped them get their shop up and running and figured out all the ins and outs, I figured there was no way I couldn't do it. Um, so I rolled the dice and built everything from the ground up. I had a lot of love and support from friends and the community, and I was very blessed in that regard. So you bet on yourself. I did. I That's did. I'm stubborn. I'm so stubborn. I will not give up no matter what. <laughs> is it? Is Does that... Uh, come from just being who you are or, or how does how does your military experience uh, play into um, you know what you've been able to accomplish so far I think the military is kind of um, what helped me find myself in the first place I was a lost little girl um, beaten and abused and broken in more ways than you could ever imagine and um, when I joined the military I became part of something better 
And all of a sudden I had someone that had my six. Um, we were a family. And it kind of opened my eyes to the point where, hey, no matter how bad life is, there's always going to be something that you can do about it. You know, you can always just try harder and you're not necessarily always going to be alone. Um, so the military kind of really showed me what family was and just to not give up no matter what. What branch were you in? I was in the army. Okay. Um, and, and you have, uh, I believe with your husband, started a, a foundation that gives back. Talk about brick by brick. No, no, no. So that's not, that's not my husband. That's one of my really good friends. Okay. Um, his name is Justin. And conveniently, the tattoo industry is what brought me to him. So I had an apprentice, beautiful man, um, talented artist, and we all game. So like on PlayStation and we would do it all online. And he introduced me to one of his friends and we just hit it off. And then, you know, we started talking a little bit more personal um, and he's a veteran and he worked for the VA doing a live stream with uh, called Brick by Brick Vets and it's veterans helping veterans. Okay. So he okay. asked if I wanted to join or be a guest um, for the VA stream. I did it. And then it kind of spiraled. We started doing a lot more things. Um, he has a separate one, but since we like to game and we're nerds, um, we would get on and we do live streaming together. Um, and everything kind of focuses around bringing the veterans out of that dark place and letting them know again, that they're not alone. Um, and then we offer the services more or less him, obviously, um, that program offers the information that a lot of us vets just don't have. Um, and a lot of us just don't even want to try. So it's, it's kind of giving everyone the courage and the ability to access the, all the benefits that, um, that you might not know we have. How, if somebody is interested in, in finding out more about brick by brick, either maybe it can help them or maybe it can help somebody they know, uh, what mm -hmm. do they do? How do they reach out? We have a website um that i can post and i can send to you guys and then there's live links and streams on twitch discord um you, they can message over my facebook um and i can get them all connected and give them numbers and we'll, 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 well. put that on that, that information on our screen here uh as yeah. well because that's that's really important uh work that you're doing there it is um it's kind of the thing for me and the same goes true with the tattoo parlor you know we offer so many things to veterans. Uh, it's not your regular tattoo parlor. It's really not. Um, I do it because I get to be part of someone's forever. And we get so many doors open. So I get to meet so many different people and so many different walks of life. And I try to use it as kind of like a connection hub. Oh, well, this person needs this. Well, hey, I know a guy. And um, it's just, like I said, it's opened so many doors. Isn't it interesting how interconnected we all are if we just start looking for those connections. Well, and it's kindness too. A lot of the things, you know, I tried to teach my kids this too. It's like a little bit of kindness could go such a long way. If you're able to speak to someone who normally doesn't want to talk and, you know, tattooing's intimate. It's like, you're going to have to trust me. I have to get to know you. I have to understand you. Um, and being that safe person makes people just open up. So then I'm kind of able to like, understand a little bit of where they came from and sometimes offer suggestions or lead them to other things, especially veterans. That's wonderful. Um, if people want to uh, come up and visit, uh, visit your location, uh, give us an address. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Kirk's clubhouse. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. And what's the address? I'm at 10015 Alta Sierra drive. And that's in grass Valley, California, 95949. And um, the reason we named it the clubhouse is because it's just that you don't have to come there to get tattooed. Um, you can come there and you can hang out. It's a safe place if you're having a bad day or you don't want to go home. Um, it's it's a place where you can go and just hang out with like minded people and be safe. God, you're, you're doing wonderful things. Thank you so much you. For, for doing what you do to help fellow veterans and, and just people who may need somebody to to lean on. Uh, it, it's, it's really cool that, that you are there for them. I'm, I'm actually kind of tearing up a little bit. It, it's, it's really cool what you're doing. Well, I just, I know what it's like to not have somewhere to go or to not feel safe. And unfortunately, most of my adolescence, I spent feeling that way. So if I'm able to give that back to somebody, um, 
like we do food, we do barbecues, we do all these things and they do it all for free just so people can meet people. And again, it goes back to kindness. You know, we have a drop down movie projector and a patio and anything that we can do, you know, we really try to just build that community for everyone. That's fantastic. And before we wrap up, I'll just uh, uh, present this, this one thing to you. Uh, I got a tattoo a little over a year ago and uh, oh. I've actually got a, a couple of tattoos, but they're, they're kind of janky. Um, but the one I got a little over a year ago is the jankiest. So I'm just wondering if maybe you do any kind of corrective because uh, I wanted to get, I have a little uh, lawnmower guy on my chest and he's mowing my chest hair. I and, love it. <laughs> and so I decided that I, I have Irish heritage. And so I wanted to get a tattoo of an Irish flag. And my wife would only let me get it if the little lawnmower man was carrying the flag. And so I went into a place and I got the tattoo and the Irish flag colors are orange, white and uh, uh, green. green. And um, actually from the inside out, it's it's green, white and and orange. And when we got all done, uh, the tattoo person that did my flag, they they used red. So instead of an Irish flag, I have an Italian flag. <laughs> and I can fix that. <laughs> you can see it, but there it oh, is. <laughs> I love that. And if, if you could fix that, that would be one act of kindness for me that I would really appreciate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, everybody has kind of their forte in our industry, you know, oh, American traditional <laughs> or neo-traditional. Mine is actually fixing the things that aren't done the way that they should That's have been. That's who you are. You're a fixer in every sense. I love, yeah, I love fixing things. But yeah, you're more than welcome. Come on out and I will fix that. It would probably take maybe 10 minutes, if that. Any excuse to head up to Grass Valley, Nevada City area, I'm all for it anyway. So, Oh, it's so beautiful up here. Yeah. Krista, thank you so much. You're wonderful. Of course. And keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much.